all, I am Madam Kong. Today we are going to discuss about Puri Lab Experiment 2 which related with titration. This experiment is very important because it is related with your practical test. So you must learn all the titration skill, how to jot down the initial reading, final reading, how to rinse, how to fill in the solution, transfer the solution and everything. So, are you ready? Let's start. Experiment 2. The title is Acid-Based Titration. Determination of the Concentration of Hydrochloric Acid Solution. So, there are few objectives for this experiment. First, we must know how to prepare the standard solution of oxalic acid. Second, to standardize the sodium hydroxide solution. Third, to determine the concentration of hydrochloric solution. And then, the most important part, you must acquire the correct technique of titration. You must learn how to handle the burette, how to handle the pipette, and how to continue the experiment with repeating titration. So, this is the introduction from your lab manuals. There are a few theory, so you must know how to extract the main point for this in introduction. So Madam Kong will give you some hints. First, what is titration? Next, about the standard solution. Next, what is an equivalent point? What is end point? And you can add some point that related with titration. Dilution. Next, procedure A. Preparation of standard solution. These are the steps from your lab manual. So step number one, you have to weigh 3 grams of oxalic acid. Okay, last experiment you already learned how to use the analytical balance. So the step is the same. So you have to okay make sure pair first, then only you start to measure 3 grams of oxalic acid. Next, you can transfer distill water into the beaker and stir the solute with the distilled water, the solvent H2O, until the solution becomes homogeneously, meaning that there is no oxalic acid solid anymore. Then you transfer the oxalic acid solution into volumetric flux. Of course, before you transfer, right, make sure all the apparatus already Rinse with tap water and rinse with distilled water. Okay, then you transfer and remember you must rinse the beaker, the filter funnel and the glass root as well. Okay, all the rinsing water you must pour inside over here because right we have to make sure all the oxalic acid okay, totally transferred into the volumetric flux. This is the way to prepare the standard solution. Then you have to shake the solution until homogeneous. Okay, this standard solution you are going to use to in part B. Next, procedure B, standardization of sodium hydroxide solution. So for this part, there are 10 steps from a lab manual. So I summarize the step for you all. So first, Make sure that you rinse the burette with three solution. First, tap water, then distilled water, and then the third one is sodium hydroxide. After that, you fill in the sodium hydroxide inside the burette. Then you have to check, is there any air bubbles? If yes, you have to discard all the air bubbles before you start the experiment. Then you have to record the initial reading of the burette. So before you start to record, make sure that you know how to read the skill of burette. And then the initial reading not necessarily start with 0, 0.00. It can be 0 0.10, 0 0.20 or, uh, or 1.25 and so on. Not necessary 0, 0.00. Okay, next for the pipette part, again, we have to rinse three times. First with the tap water, distilled water. And the last one is oxalic acid. 
before you start for pipette the solution, make sure you transfer the oxalic acid solution into beaker. You cannot directly pipette the oxalic acid solution from the volumetric flux. You must transfer the volumetric flux oxalic acid into beaker. Clear? I keep on repeat from this part. Uh, not allowed to take the solution directly from the volumetric flux. You must transfer into beaker first. Then only you start to pipette 25 ml of oxalic acid and transfer into conical flux. Remember, you must add distilled water after transfer. Here also the same, there is a manicus over the pipette. Make sure you pipette exactly 25 ml of standard solution. There are some specific skills for this part. The method will teach you during experiment 2. Okay, after that, before you start the titration, make sure you double check. Have to record the initial reading from the burette. Then place a white towel on, on the top of the retort stand to help you observe the changes of the color while titration happens. And then you can start titrate. For your titrate, you have to swirl the conical flux. At the halfway, you can stop a while to rinse the wall of the conical flux with distilled water to ensure that all the sodium hydroxide mixed with oxalic acid. Of course, from time to time, you have to observe the changes of the color, the changes color of the solution. Is it start to change to light pink or light purple? If yes, you have to continue your titration drop by drop. Okay, when you notice there are some changes color, then you have to slow down your titration process and then add the solution, add the sodium hydroxide solution drop by drop. Okay, then you have to continue the titration for three times, meaning that you have to refill the sodium hydroxide solution into red, and then you have to pipette another 25 ml of oxalic acid to titrate for the next set. Okay, so actually total how many sets? The answer is four sets. First is gross reading. Gross reading is very important to help you to identify Roughly how many ml of sodium hydroxide okay, need to react with oxalic acid in order to achieve the end point. So, for example, if your gross reading is 20 ml, meaning that for the next set, the volume should not more than 20 ml, maybe 19.5, 19.8, depends your skill, how accurate your skill to to get the end point. Get it? So I repeat one more time. Okay. Gross reading is help you to estimate the volume of sodium hydroxide to react with oxalic acid to achieve end point. Then your first, second and third titration, normally the volume of sodium hydroxide would not more than the gross reading unless you overshoot. Okay, clear? So, once you finish your one set titration, remember to record the final reading. Next, procedure C, determination of the molar concentration of HCl hydrochloric acid solution. If compared to part A and part B, part C is much more easier. Okay, this part C is not related with A and B anymore. This one, you just go to take roughly around 100, 100 ml of HCl. Uh, okay, 120 ml of HCl. Okay, because 20 ml is for you to rinse the pipette. Okay, then another 100 ml you need to divide four times gross, first, second, and third titration. So 25 ml you have to prepare four times. Okay, into and then transfer into 250 ml of conical flux. So the steps exactly same as part B rinse, pipette, transfer, and add this. Uh, uh, indicator fan of tally. Okay, so repeat step 5 till 9 as in part B. So, meaning that this part is for the burette and titration. You must record the initial reading for the burette, 
and then bef again before you start you double check is there any air bubbles if yes you have to discard the air bubbles huh? and then place white towel on the retort stand then start the titration and swirl the solution for the sodium hydroxide drop with the drop into the conical flux with and react with the HCl and then halfway you can stop rinse the conical flux with distilled water you need to ensure that acid and base properly react and observe the changes of the color and then repeat three times and then record the final reading then the last part is calculate the concentration of HCl Okay, now we go to result and calculation part. So this is the table. We need to jot down all the result. So the mass of oxalic acid. Then we need to calculate the mole of oxalic acid based on this formula. Then we need to calculate the molarity of oxalic acid based on this formula by using the mole of solute that we get from here over the liter of solution that we prepare. So part B, we have to jot out all the final reading and initial reading for the volume of sodium hydroxide. So average volume of sodium hydroxide used, you just need to cons uh, take the reading from set 1, set 2 and set 3. Ignore the gross. Huh? Then you have to write the balanced chemical equation for the reaction between oxalic acid and sodium hydroxide. Based on this equation, we will know the mole ratio between oxalic acid and sodium hydroxide and then can help you to calculate the molarity of sodium, hydro sodium hydroxide. Same for part C, we have to jot out all the results for the gross reading, first, second and third titration reading. And then we need to calculate the average volume of sodium hydroxide used. Again, we just need to consider the volume of first, second and third reading. The gross just for estimation. Huh? And then you have to write the balance equation for the reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide and determine the mole ratio between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. Then we need to find out the mole of sodium hydroxide based on MV per thousand in order to help you to find the mole of HCl, then to find out the molarity of HCl. So here is the chemical equation. You can get the equation. You are very lucky because the equation is given from a lab manual. Based on the equation, you can estimate the you can know the mole ratio between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide and the mole ratio of oxalic acid and sodium hydroxide in order to help you okay to determine the other concentration of the solution. Then for the discussion part, you just need to answer this question. First, how to increase the accuracy of titration? Second, do we need to know the exact concentration of oxalic acid to determine the concentration of base? And then the question, the addition of water into the conical flux will affect the result of titration? Yes or no? Then explain. So the last is about conclusion. So as I said before, conclusion must always refer to your objective. So in this case, the first and fourth objective is related with your skill. So we need no need to make it as the conclusion. And then you just need to answer for the second and third objective. So what is the molarity of sodium hydroxide? And then what is the molarity of hydrochloric acid that you already calculated from the result and calculation part? Okay, that's all for the pre-lab experiment to hope you can study seriously and then keep on repeating listen each part of my explanation so that you won't lose or miss up something during the actual day for experiment 2. So that's all for today. Don't forget to follow my IG at Kemicom SL. Subscribe, like and share my YouTube channel Kemicom SL. And follow my Facebook, Kemi Kong Shit Lee. Hope you all learned something. Thank you.